Hello, my name is Jeffrey Burns. I'm professor in medicine. Starting over. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Burns. I'm professor of medicine and pediatrics and interim chief of the renal electrolyte and hypertension division at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. I am also uh, editor in chief of Medscape Nephrology. I decided for this, my first video blog, to discuss a recent paper that I co authored with Dr. Charlie O'Neill from Emory University in Atlanta, in which we report the results of a survey that we did among renal fellowship program directors uh, about procedures in nephrology training. Uh, the paper was published in C. Jason in July 2008. The last survey before our paper was published that specifically addressed renal fellowship training was reported in 1992 in seminars and dialysis by Levin and colleagues and focused mostly on time spent during training on educational activities, although the paper did also address uh, the number of procedures such as femoral catheters uh, that were placed by trainees. Um, this, was, uh, this paper followed an article that was published a couple of years earlier in, uh, in the Annals of Internal Medicine that queried uh, practicing physicians about the uh, adequacy of their prior training uh, as fellows and offered some recommendations for the minimum numbers of procedures that should be performed during training to establish a certain level of competence, but nothing from that paper was really ever um, included into practice or uh, in training. So other than these two papers, there's really not much ever published before addressing uh, aspects of uh, renal fellowship training, uh, specifically related to procedures. So our survey included responses from 93 of 136 training program directors, or about 68% of all uh, programs. We learned, as was expected, that most, uh, although not all programs, uh, train their fellows in the placement of femoral vein uh, dialysis catheters, kidney biopsies, and continuous renal replacement therapy. Uh, placement of internal jugular uh, vein dialysis catheters was not as frequently performed uh, by trainees as was placement of femoral dialysis catheters. That almost all programs continue to do kidney biopsies and train their fellows in the performance of kidney biopsies was reassuring, although frankly a little bit surprising since I've become increasingly aware of, uh, the, uh, of a trend uh, in which uh, practitioners, particularly in private practice, have stopped doing kidney biopsies uh, and rather refer all their patients who need kidney biopsies to uh, interventional radiologists. And I've learned that at least a few academic programs have done the same and have stopped doing kidney biopsies uh, as nephrologists uh, for two reasons. One is malpractice costs uh, being higher for, for nephrologists to do kidney biopsies compared to those who don't, um, and just because of the hassle of doing those. I was surprised to learn in our survey that 40 uh, to 50 percent of programs perform their kidney biopsies with ultrasound uh, guidance themselves uh, without including a radiologist in this, and additional programs are planning to do this in the future. Hemodialysis access interventional nephrology procedures such as thrombectomy, angioplasty, and stent placement were reported to be performed by 13 to 24 percent of programs. Most of these procedures are, of course, done by attendings rather than fellows, but at least there's training opportunities for fellows to be involved. A big surprise to me uh, and to uh, my co-author, Charlie O'Neill, was that for many procedures that are performed by nephrologists and trainees, the programs had not established a minimum number of procedures that uh, need to be performed by the trainees before a minimum level of competence could be assessed and determined for those fellows. For instance, a third of programs had no specific number of kidney biopsies or femoral non-tunnel dialysis catheters that needed to be placed in order to determine that a fellow was competent in these procedures. 60% of programs that used ultrasound for doing kidney biopsies did not have minimum standard for competency, at least in terms of number of procedures to be performed. I suspect that this area might be a further area for discussion among training program directors. There are some guidelines out there from the American Society of Diagnostic and Interventional Nephrology, but they've not been universally embraced or incorporated into um, training guidelines. Similar situations have arisen for other uh, internal medicine subspecialties where some guidelines have been proposed but not included into um, training. As noted in our paper, I was struck uh, not that long ago by a student who asked me, uh, don't nephrologists do any procedures? I'm a big advocate of maintaining uh, procedures in the repertoire of nephrology and expanding our procedural scope of practice. I think in order to do so, we're going to have to make sure that we're uh, training our fellows well and that we can document their competence uh, in these various procedures.
I'm hoping that this first blog will initiate a discussion about training of our renal fellows and procedures and even in other aspects of, uh, of nephrology. I thank you for watching, watching and listening to this, my first blog. The paper that I refer to is published in CJS in Volume 3, pages 941 to 947 in July of 2008. I would encourage you to comment using the Medscape Nephrology blog discussion board uh, to discuss this paper and any other aspects of uh, renal fellowship training that you think uh, might be of interest. Again, this is Jeffrey Burns from the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine in Philadelphia.